In this tutorial, we will learn how to create a neon sign for any text like this, easily. And for this, we will use the EV Render Engine in Blender. So, let us first start with a fresh new file. Delete the default cube, and from the Add menu, add a text field. In order to rotate this text towards us, change its X rotation value to 90 degrees, and Z rotation value to also 90 degrees. We would also like this text to be center aligned. So go to the text tab here, and under the alignment section, change the horizontal alignment to center, and the vertical alignment to also center. Now, in order to add our own text, instead of this default text, please go to the edit mode. Press backspace to delete everything, and type any text you want. We will use the popular restaurant chain name, Barbecue Nation. It will look better if we have little more space between these two lines. So, change the line spacing here, to 1.2. Now go back to the object mode. Since we are trying to create a neon sign, we should use a round, and slim font, so that it looks like the gas tubes used in an actual neon sign. So, let us change this font. You will get plenty of such font over the internet, just download one of them. Back to Blender, expand this font section, then click on Open, and go to the location where you have saved your font. No need to install any font, it may not work, just save the TTF file in some folder, and then directly open it from there. We now get this nice looking text, perfect for neon effect. To add a thickness to this, and to make it a 3D object, just expand this geometry section, and in the extrude field, enter a very small value, like 0.02. Now we have a 3D text with correct font, and a perfect shape as well. Let us switch over to the rendered view mode. For the glow, we need to add an emission material for this text. So go to the materials tab, and create a new material. Then change this surface type to emission. Next is the color. Change this color to anything you like. We will use a green color here. Let us fine tune this to a perfect value, maybe 0.35, because we will need to use this value in other places. Well, the actual neon tubes are often not as bright as this. To correct this, go to the color, and lower the saturation to 0.75. Now this looks good, but it is too faint. So, we need to bump up the strength little bit, to 4. Then go to the Render Properties tab. Enable the Bloom option, and expand it. First, change the Radius value to 3. So the glow does not scatter too far from the object surface. Now, change the bloom color to a green color, we can type in the same value, 0.35, that we have used in its material. Also, change the intensity to a higher value like 0.2. Or, maybe, 0.25. That gives us a nice and realistic glow around the neon text. Now, neon signs are often placed next to a wall for support, so let us also add a background wall behind this text, it will bring out this neon effect far better. Let us add a plane into our scene. Rotate it by 90 degrees around the y-axis. To cover the entire text, we need to also scale it up, maybe by 2.5 times in the x, and by 3.5 times in the y dimension. The text is right on the plane at this point. So, we need to also move the wall in the back, little bit away from the text. Please use the move tool to move it back, like this. Okay. We can fine-tune this in the Properties Editor. Let us use a gap of 0.25 between them. That should be enough. So we get the neon text, perfectly hanging in front of the background wall. We will add some brick texture for this wall. You can download any texture from the internet, or create one separately. While the wall is selected, go to the Materials tab, and create a new material. To add a texture, click on this yellow icon beside the base color, and select Image Texture. Click on this Open button, go to the location where you have saved the wall texture, and then open it. Let the selected texture display here. Well, you can see that the texture is auto-rotated, from landscape to a portrait orientation. In order to fix this problem, open the Shader Editor. We already have some nodes for the material. In addition to these, add a Texture Coordinate node. And we will also need a Mapping node, so add the same, and place it between these two. Connect the generated output of the Texture Coordinate node to the input of this Mapping node. 
Change the zero rotation value to 90 degrees. Then connect vector to vector. That should fix the auto rotation problem of our texture. So we get this nice wall texture, and the neon text is looking far better. We have to now take care of the lighting part. First, go to the world tab. And change the environment color to complete black. By default, Blender has added a point light source for this scene. We have to either reduce its strength to a negligible value, or even better, let us just delete and remove it. We want the wall to be illuminated only by our neon light, which is a mesh light. Since we are working in EV, and it has some limitations with emission lights, we have to work with the indirect lighting. We need to add an irradiance volume and then bake the light. So go to the Add menu, and under the Light Probe, add an irradiance volume. Scale it up sufficiently, so that it covers the entire text, and also the wall behind it. This should be good. Now, go to the Render Properties tab. Scroll all the way down to this Indirect Lighting section and expand it. Click on Bake Indirect Lighting. You can see the bake progress here. I have created a separate tutorial that covers everything about indirect lighting, the link is in the video description. You can also turn on this screen space reflections. It will add more fine details. Let us hide the irradiance volume in the viewport. Now, we got the illumination on the wall. Although, our job should be ideally completed here, but I am not quite satisfied yet. Technically, the neon light is okay, but there is very less amount of light reflected here on the wall. You may immediately think that we can increase the strength of the emission. But the problem is, as we increase it, the light becomes brighter and more white than green. If we bake the scene with this strong emission, it will surely catch more light, but it won't be perfect green, it will look like a daylight. So, let us change the emission back to 4. We know that EV is very fast, but not very perfect. To compensate for this, we will add some fake lights here. We will add a series of point lights, that will bring the required brightness, without a change of color. Let us go to Add, and under the Light section, just add a single point light. The position is fine, only change its color to the same green color, or better to type the exact color value here, 0.35, that we have used for the neon. Then press Alt-D on your keyboard to duplicate it. And move this second copy little bit away from the first light. Again press Alt-D, and create a series of lights, on both sides. You can also use Shift-D to duplicate, but Alt-D has a big advantage here. Since we have used Alt-D, the lights are all connected. If you now change the light properties for any one of them, say you change its color to something else, it will reflect equally on all the lights. It helps you to experiment with the lights, and you need not change each one of them individually. Let us change it back to where we were, the green light of 0.35. We need to place these lights little up, just on the neon text. So select all of them one by one, and move them up little bit, like this. Then duplicate them with Alt-D, and bring them down to this text. We don't need this last one, so select it, and hit X to delete it, because the text on this line is shorter than the text above. Select all these four lights together, and then move them towards the right, just on this text. We are now all done, and the neon sign is looking brilliant and very realistic. A perfect lighting has always been the primary key to a realistic modeling. One quick suggestion, if you have this as part of a complete scene, you may want to keep it in a separate layer. That way, it won't get affected by any other light in your scene, that you need for other objects. If you want, you can also change the font, or the color of this light. Let us try with some other fonts. So, in the text tab, go down to the font section. Let us open the folder, and take some other font for example. We then get this in the output. Or, we can try the other one as well. I have given these font names in the description below. It looks awesome, and almost real. And with some more work, we can also add a flickering effect to it. Like this. We will cover it, next time. I hope you like this tutorial. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel.